Diffusion and osmosis both occur when particles move through a membrane. Here we'll show you what osmosis means. We have a container with a porous barrier in the middle. Water molecules can pass through the tiny holes in the barrier, but not larger molecules. We'll add some water to both sides of the barrier. We'll represent a few water molecules and show that they are moving randomly. You can see they go through the barrier from left to right and from right to left. But for each one that goes right, another one goes left. So an equilibrium is maintained. Now we'll add some sugar to the right side. We see that the sugar molecules are too large to pass through the porous barrier. They just bounce off of it. But water molecules are able to pass through the barrier. Let's focus on just the water. Notice there's a high concentration of water on the left side of the barrier, with 13 water molecules shown. But on the right side, the concentration of water is low. There are only three water molecules shown. The rest of the space is taken up by the sugar molecules. Water molecules are small enough to pass through this barrier, and we know that water will diffuse through a barrier from an area of high concentration to an area of lower concentration. So in this case, it will diffuse toward the right chamber. As the water moves into the right chamber, the volume in the right chamber increases, while the volume in the left chamber decreases. Watch how they change. The concentration of water is now equal on both sides. Equilibrium has been reached. Stopping the animation, we see that water has diffused through the barrier, from an area of pure water to an area where a solute, sugar in this case, is dissolved in the water. This process is called osmosis. Osmosis can be defined as the tendency of a solvent, usually water, to pass through a semi-permeable membrane into a solution where the solvent concentration is lower and the solute concentration is higher. In this case, water is the solvent and sugar is the solute, the substance dissolved in the solvent. Osmosis plays a big role in living things, as you will see. We'll see how osmosis works with red blood cells. This represents a red blood cell. All blood contains some dissolved salts. Dissolved salts are represented here by green spheres. And these represent water molecules. Inside of the cell, the concentration of dissolved salts is relatively low, and the concentration of water is relatively high. Now we'll put the cell in some salty water. You can see that the salt water, outside the cell, has a high salt concentration and a low water concentration. There are way more green spheres shown here than water molecules. So the cell is low in salt and high in water, whereas the solution is high in salt and low in water. Look at this diagram and make sure you understand this. Now we'll clear away the salt particles from our diagram and focus on just the water. Because the water concentration is higher inside the cell than outside, water will diffuse out of the cell. Watch what happens to the cell as this takes place. As the water moves out of the cell, it shrinks and becomes deformed. The surrounding salt water has drawn water out of the cell by the process of osmosis. Now we'll do another experiment. 
This time we'll place the cell in pure distilled water, which has no dissolved salt. Because there's no salt in water outside the cell, the concentration of water outside the cell is greater than the concentration of water inside the cell, where some of the room is taken up by particles of dissolved salt. Water flows from an area of high water concentration to an area of low water concentration. So do you think the water will flow out of the cell or into the cell? We see that in this case, it will flow into the cell. Now we'll take away the particles, but remember, we still have a cell immersed in distilled water. So the water will flow into the cell. As water moves into the cell, it grows larger. And some cells will keep on growing, until they eventually burst. Clearly, if a single-celled organism is used to being in salt water and you suddenly add it to pure water, it can actually destroy it.